You know, whenever the word mathematics uh, is sort of mentioned in conversation, it usually brings about uh, very, very strong emotions. And these are usually not very positive emotions, uh, unfortunately. These are all very sort of negative emotions, you know. They're very strong emotions in the form of, uh, uh, you know, words like hatred and, and fear and detest uh, usually come out. And it's, uh, you know, so it's quite fascinating. I mean, you know, why, why this actually happens. I mean, the last time I checked, um, you know, algebra never killed anybody. So why the strong emotions uh, against particular topics? You know, you hear people saying, I, I hated algebra. I mean, you know, it's as if it was a real person who had done something really nasty to you. It's like, I hated so-and-so and I hated algebra. It's like, why? There are actually many reasons why uh, uh, students eventually start uh, feeling this way towards mathematics. Uh, but let's sort of highlight three broad reasons uh, why students, uh, you know, might eventually end up feeling in, in, in this way. Uh, now, one of the reasons is that we really recognize that uh, students learn at very, very different rates. Okay, let me give you an example. So imagine that you have a seven-year-old child. Okay, then for a particular topic, that seven-year-old child may have the ability of an average five-year-old child. But for another topic, that same seven-year-old child may have the ability of an average nine-year-old child. Now the problem occurs that when we expect all students to perform at exactly the same level, right? And when some students don't do that, right, they end up performing at a level which is lower or even slightly lower uh, than the level at which they're expected to perform, obviously they do badly. And if they consistently do badly, uh, they eventually start hating the subject. The second reason is that we don't really force or, or encourage uh, children to master concepts. So give, let me give you another example. So imagine that a child gets anywhere between 70 to 80 percent uh, in uh, his or her math exams uh, two to three years in a row. Now the, you know, the parents, the, 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 the children themselves uh, or the teachers would be fairly happy, right? 70 to 80 percent three years in a row is pretty good. But the fact of the matter is that they have not got 20 to 30 percent of the material. So now in the third year or in the fourth year, uh, when they are introduced to some new topic and that new topic happens to rely on some of the previous topics where they only got 70 to 80 percent of the material, then it's going to be harder for the child to actually uh, completely get the new topic because the foundational topics are not crystal clear. Okay, so one really has to work towards getting children to master concepts. Yeah. The third is actually the way we approach uh, the teaching of mathematics. It is extremely important for us to, uh, when we are introducing new topics uh, to, to children, to uh, highlight the relationship between real world applications and the underlying concept. Okay, because when a child actually sees that relationship, there is a greater chance that the child would actually be more inclined to study the concept, to, to be more engaged with the concept, uh, if he or she can actually see a clear connection between the algebra that you're doing or the uh, math concept that you're being taught and something in the real world. So in summary, uh, you know, these are three broad reasons uh, uh, why uh, children eventually develop this sort of, uh, you know, very unhealthy um, um, emotions towards mathematics. And I think it, 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 it is possible to systematically try and address uh, these issues uh, so that, uh, you know, children actually, uh, uh, let alone hating the subject, actually start enjoying the subject.